My second talk today is about improved two-chain resolution debugging. Um, and I want you to put yourself in the position where you have uh, a Bazel monorepository where you have multiple target platforms and you have multiple tool chains to target them, but maybe you also have remote execution. And that means you have multiple exec platforms. So you can run builds not only on your host machine, but you can also run them, for example, if you have a Mac, you can run them on a Linux remote executor. And this becomes very complicated very quickly because you just multiply the amount of possible tool chains to exist and the amount of errors to creep in. And uh, two chain resolution debug is a flag in Bazel that is supposed to help you understand why Bazel doesn't pick the tool chain that you wanted. But as I will show you now, this doesn't really pan out because even the documentation for the flag says the output of this flag is very complex and will likely only be useful to experts in tool chain resolution. And that kind of defines, uh, th that defeats the purpose. So my idea today is to make you experts in tool chain resolution and to also show you how Basil 7 made this a lot easier uh, with some work from my colleague Guillaume uh, and I will show you in a bit. So first let's talk about tool chains, what they actually are. Um, the idea of a tool chain is if I have a programming language like here, we have the OS language and we want to have a rule that uh, compiles a binary for the OS programming language, somehow we need to get access to a compiler. And in Bazel, we have tool chains to, to facilitate that. But as you can see here, uh, when I use this rule, I don't mention the tool chain anywhere. So where does it come from? Uh, for that, we look into the rule implementation. And here we can see that um, in the rule function, you can give it a list of tool chains. And what this does is it makes the tool chain available uh, during the, the actual rule execution. And then in the implementation function, you can see that through the context object, we can access the tool chains. And then we can also access some information that is provided by the tool chain, like for example, the path to the compiler. So there are two things that are important when you use a tool chain. There are tool chain types. They are used to differentiate between different tool chains. So if you have a C++ tool chain and you want to use it in your rule, you would use this tool chain type and for Java, a different one. So you just can differentiate between different tool chains. And this is important when you use a tool chain, but also when you uh, want to declare uh, an instance of a tool chain. And then the second thing is the tool chain info provider. And this is just the information that you get in the rule implementation uh, for a specific instance of a tool chain. So how do you define a tool chain? First of all, you put a tool chain type into any kind of build file that you want. It's just important that you keep uh, this tool chain type always in the same place because Consumers of your tool chain will use it, and also people who define new instances of your tool chain will also use it. So you should keep it at a place where it can have a fixed label and everyone can depend on it. Uh, the next part is a provider, and this is just whatever you want, whatever makes sense for your tool chain. Uh, in this case, you want to have a compiler binary, you have some kind of standard library, you have some flags that you want to pass. Uh, you can do whatever you want here. And then you see you have a standard rule. Um, it will just take any flags that you want and it has an implementation function. And most importantly, it returns a tool chain info provider that wraps your custom provider with any kind of fields that you want. And then how do you actually instantiate a uh, tool chain of this type. Um, you call your, your custom function, your, your custom rule that you just defined, and you can do this as many times as you want for any sort of tool chain that you want to define. Um, in this case, it's one for Linux, AMD64. Uh, you use the attributes that you declared previously, and this is the 
toolchain specific parts, so this will differ for every toolchain, and then below is the generic part, and this is what Bazel uses during uh, toolchain resolution. But my colleague Yom said, this toolchain is actually named in the wrong way because the other thing is actually the, the toolchain and this is just some, some other generic thing on top of it. So we will just call it toolchain definition. Uh, it has a name. It, has, it, it points to the thing I declared earlier that has the toolchain info provider. Um, it also links to the toolchain type so that it's clear that what kind of toolchain is this actually. And then it has two sets of constraints. Uh, one is for the exact platform, so it defines where can the toolchain actually run, and then also what can my toolchain target. And these are very relevant for toolchain resolution. So that is what we will look at next. Um, so there's two phases of toolchain resolution. The first one, you put in a single toolchain type, you put in all of the registered execution platforms. So those might be many if you have remote execution. And you have a single target platform, and you want to know for each of those execution platforms which toolchain will Bazel use. And this is a pseudocode for, for doing this. Uh, you, you put in the toolchain type, the target platform, and the exact platforms. You iterate uh, over every declared toolchain in the order that they have been declared. So the, the order matters here. You first check if the toolchain can target the target platform. If not, then it cannot be used. Then you check for each of the execution platforms. Does that execution platform have already a toolchain uh, declared for it? If it has, then we don't need one. But if it hasn't, then we say, for this execution platform, use this toolchain. And then at the end, we just return the map of assignments. That was only the first part. The second one might be a bit confusing. When you write a, a, a rule, you actually can use multiple toolchains at once. The same applies if you use execution groups. And you can also have mandatory toolchains and optional toolchains. And what this second part of the algorithm does is it takes these multiple toolchain types and it takes the list of execution platforms as well as their resolved toolchains from the first step and the target platform and it decides which is the best execution platform to use. Uh, sorry, let me go back. Uh, so what it does basically is uh, it goes over the execution platforms in the order that they were registered in so the order matters here as well. And it takes the first one that has all of the required toolchains and the highest number of optional toolchains. So next, let's look at toolchain resolution debug. This is what the output looks like in Bazel 6 and before. You don't have to look at this in detail. It's just a shock image. Uh, and what you see is there's a lot of duplicate information here. It's really hard to understand what's going on. And Guillaume, my colleague for Basel 7, uh, submitted a, a fix that made this a lot better. So this is what the same output looks like with Basel 7. Let's look at this in a bit more detail. Uh, here you see the, the first part of the two-chain resolution you see you have a certain toolchain type, you have a target platform, and then you go over all of the toolchains. You check if it can target the toolchain, uh, if, if the toolchain can target the platform. You then check for all of the execution platforms. Can it execute on it? And then you get a recap. And the most important thing is for one invocation of this algorithm, you just get one message and you use indentation to actually uh, give you more context of where in this for loop you actually are. And yeah, there was a lot of duplicate information. It's now much cleaner. And if you know the algorithm, this is very straightforward. Uh, he also made it faster in the process. So he now stops early when every execution platform has been assigned a toolchain. And also, the second part of the algorithm was very aggressive in printing messages. It now also is uh, easier to read. So thank you, Guillaume. <laughs>